sometimes because you have certain formatting within the tables and I feel like it's less likely that you're gonna kind of mess up your data when it's in the table, such as you know sorting the data on one column without sorting the data on the other column. When I'm in the table, I can also go to the table tools up top. We can add a total column. And if I sum this up, you can see that this sums up to 100%. That'll give us kind of a check figure that what we're doing is correct. However, if I go back up top here, you'll recall one of the benefits from the prior presentation, you may recall, is that now I can adjust this number a little bit more easily. So if I adjust this number and say I want to make it 15, notice now because we used a spill sequence, it'll now increase to 15 automatically. And so I can bring it back down to 12 so you have a, a bit more flexibility with these ones. Also just note, with this binome.dist.range, the arguments are a little bit different and they're a little bit more flexible. We don't need the cumulative uh, argument as much because it allows us to enter multiple arguments, which allows us to kind of pick the middle of the range a little bit more directly, as opposed to what we did with the Poisson distribution. If you recall, if you saw the prior presentations where we had to do the cumulative up to a certain point, and then subtract out the cumulative up to a, up to a different point, right? In order to get that middle range. So it's a little bit, it's got a little bit more flexibility. Okay, let's go ahead and graph this thing. I'm gonna make column F a little bit skinnier and then let's select our data. And so I'm gonna go up top and go to the insert and then we'll go to the charts and we'll enter the bar chart and add our bar chart. So I'm gonna pull that to the right and then do our standard process. I'm gonna click on it, go to the data up top and I would like to go to the edit of this side to make sure it's picking up our X numbers which are gonna be from zero to 12. So I'm gonna say okay and okay. And so there we have it. I'll just delete this top bit. And so so there we have it. And you can see, of course, that it kind of in the middle point is that six as we would expect. We can also plot it with a line chart too. So I can select these, insert. We can then go to the charts and have a line chart, something like this one, and have it look like this format. I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to... Uh, click on the data and select this one and say, I want to make sure that you pick up my numbers here, uh, zero to 12 and okay. Okay, so we can format it like that. And it looks kind of like what you would expect the, the middle point being six. So let's do a, a little bit of an analysis similar to what we did in the prior presentation. If we think about our data over here, if we have a fair coin, 50-50 on the coin flips, remember if I flipped it zero times, if I had zero flips, then if I define a success as heads, it, then th I'm not gonna get any heads, of course, so 100% likelihood that that it's gonna be you know, at zero, right, zero. And then I'm gonna say if I have one, well then, uh, if I have zero successes, the likelihood is 50%. The likelihood if under two flips that I get one success defined as a heads is 50%. If I say two, then now we're gonna say, okay, if I do it, if I do the flip two times, the likelihood that I get no successes defined as heads, 25% likelihood that I get one success defined as heads, 50% likelihood that I get two successes, both heads is 25%. And if I go to three, then you can see it's likelihood that I get zero successes out of three flips, 12.50, uh, one success out of the three flips, 37.5, two successes out of the three flips, 37.5, and three successes, they're all successful heads, 12.5, and then four, and so on and so forth. So you can see how this is being built and we looked at the changing of the curve on the right hand side in a prior presentation as well so let's put let's put it back up to 12 so we're, now we're saying 12 times we flipped it and by the way one other thing to look at if the coin was not fair then if it was 
60, like let's say, you know, it's going to land 55% of the time heads. So it's, it's slightly tweaked. The casino tweaked the coin or whatever, right? So now if I go, if I flip it one time, now it's got a, if we have zero successes, zero heads, if it's in our favor that it's 55% heads, then it's going to be 45% no heads, 55% that it will be heads two, per, two times. Now we've got only 20.25 no heads, 49.5 that we get one head out of the two, 30.25 two heads and so on and so forth. So we'll consider it a fair coin. We're going to flip it 12 times. It's going to be back to uh, the norm here, back to the where we started. So now let's mirror the experiment. So instead of us using simply a random number generation as we saw in prior examples, whereas if I was going to simulate each coin flip, I can say equals random, you know, between one and two, having one represent heads, two represent tails. But instead, we're going to get a little bit more sophisticated here and go to the data tab. And we're going to say that I want to have the data analysis tool help me generate the outcomes of 12, 12 flips according to the rules that we have here. So I'm going to say these are going to be the outcomes that we'll generate. Let's make this home tab font black, white, center it. I'm going to put them here. And then in the data tab, if you don't have this analysis section, you go to the file tab and then options and then add-ins and then Excel add-ins and go. And you want to take that analysis tool pack. And if you have that tool pack, then you've got our tools in the data tab. So let's open that up. And I want to go to some random generation numbers. And we're going to say, okay. And I'm going to say one here. That's basically the number of columns, number of random numbers. Let's go to a thousand like have we been doing customarily. This time we did this with a Poisson distribution. This time we want to get the generated numbers in accordance with a binomial distribution. P, we remember is point is uh, 0.5, 50%. And the number of trials, N, is going to be 12. So we're going to have 12 flips with a P of 50% for each of the flips. And then I'm going to put down here the output range. Where do we want to put it? I want to put those thousand numbers right there. So that's going to go to P2. And I'll say OK. And now it's simulating these, the, these tests, right? So now we flipped. These are representing, for example, one test of 12 flips where I've got five successes which we define as heads, right? So five heads out of 12, seven heads out of 12, seven heads out of 12, four out of 12, four out of 12, four out of 12, nine out of 12, and so on and so forth. So let's put those uh, results into a bucket if we could. So I'm gonna make this a little smaller and I'm gonna say this. these are gonna be our bends. And this is going to be the frequency. Now, when we have the bends are going to be anywhere from zero up to 